Hi Bookish Besties, my name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Breeds. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. It is already time to discuss my April Book of the Month predictions. <music> All right, friends, time is certainly flying as it is already time to dive into what we think will be featured in April for Book of the Month, whether as part of their featured monthly selections or as add-on selections. And I definitely have a lot to talk to you about today. But as always, first, we are going to begin by recapping how I did with March. Now, in March, Book of the Month had five curated monthly selections. Out of those five, three were books that I did feature in my March Book of the Month prediction videos. They were Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera, Anita DeMonte Laughs Last by Zochito Gonzalez, and Annie Bot by Sierra Greer. The fourth book was A Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle L. Jensen. And that was actually a late February release, so it would not have been on my radar for March. And the fifth book was Kill For Me, Kill For You by Steve Cavanaugh. That was a book that was certainly on my radar. I am a fan of Steve Cavanaugh, but I was not expecting it to be featured in Book of the Month for March because I don't believe they had featured him previously. So it was definitely a surprise to see him featured, but not an unwelcome one. I certainly added that to my box. And then Book of the Month actually had quite a few add-on selections this time. They had seven add-ons. Out of those seven, three were books that I talked about in my March prediction video. They were, of course, Murder Road by Simone St. James, Bye Baby by Carol Lovering, and The Great Divide by Christina Enriquez. Two of the seven were actually late February releases, so they would not have been on my March prediction video even if they had been on my radar. But we had Grief is for People by Sloane Crosley and The Other Valley by Scott Alexander Howard, again, both February releases. And the other two were March releases, they were just not on my radar. We had Happy Never After by Lynn Painter and Hereafter by Amy Lynn. So out of the 12 new books total that were featured on Book of the Month for March, I got about 50% right, which I'm pretty happy with considering how Book of the Month likes to do their own thing, so I was pretty satisfied with those results. All right, now it is time to go ahead and talk about what I think could potentially be featured on Book of the Month in April. Like I said, I have a lot to talk to you about, so we are going to just jump right in. As a reminder, my Book of the Month prediction videos are typically split into five distinct categories, and each category can only have up to five predictions within them. However, I actually have some other categories in this video that I don't typically feature, like nonfiction and memoir, because there were definitely some notable releases coming out that I've heard a lot about that I think could potentially be featured. So we are going to go ahead and just jump right in starting of course with the mystery thriller horror category and the very first book that I want to mention is A Game of Lies by Claire McIntosh. This is a continuation of a series. First book I believe was called The Last Party if I'm not mistaken. It is a piece of detective fiction written by Claire McIntosh and the first book was featured on Book of the Month so that is why I included this here. Book of the Month tends to like to continue their series. It's not always the case. They don't always do it but just to be safe I wanted to go ahead and include this in this category. I'm not going to go into the synopsis of the story because like I said it is a sequel but it is a piece of detective fiction and if you really enjoyed The Last Party by Claire McIntosh, I would not be surprised to see this one featured on Book of the Month in April. Sally Hepworth also has a new release coming out in April called Darling Girls. Sally Hepworth's former release called, I believe it was The Soulmate, was featured on Book of the Month, so there is a strong possibility that she could be featured again. Again, this one is called a Darling Girls, and it says, For as long as they can remember, Jessica, Nora, and Alicia have been told how lucky they are. As young girls, they were rescued from family tragedies and raised by a loving foster mother, Miss Fairchild, on an idyllic farming estate and given an elusive second chance at a happy family life. But their child childhood wasn't the fairy tale everyone thinks it was. Miss Fairchild had rules. Miss Fairchild could be unpredictable and Miss Fairchild was never ever to be crossed. In a moment of desperation, the three broke away from Miss Fairchild and thought they were free. When a body is discovered under the home they grew up in, the foster sisters find themselves thrust into the spotlight as key witnesses. Or are they prime suspects? This actually reminds me a bit of a V.C. Andrews synopsis. It follows these young kids. They either kill their mother or their mother dies and they keep it a secret because their mother was not a great person. If I'm remembering that correctly, I used to read a lot of V.C. Andrews when I was younger. Let's not get into what that says about me. This is also kind of giving me a little bit of No One Can Know vibes by Kate Alice Marshall because that does feature three sisters and the death of their parents. So some similar synopses going on here. If this is featured on Book of the Month, I would definitely be willing to pick it up. I didn't hate The Soulmate. It was nothing spectacular, but this is certainly one that I will keep my eye out for in April. And of course, I could not leave out the new Megan Miranda from this category called Daughter of Mine. Book of the Month, I believe, has featured several Megan Miranda in the past. I feel like this one is almost guaranteed. I personally have broken up with Megan Miranda, but I know that she is a highly popular author. Author. It says when Hazel Sharp, daughter of Mirror Lake's longtime local detective, unexpectedly inherits her childhood home, she's warily drawn back to the town and people she left behind almost a decade earlier. But Hazel's not the only relic of the past to return. A drought has descended on the region, and as the water level in the lake drops, long hidden secrets begin to emerge, including evidence that may help finally explain the mystery of her mother's disappearance. That actually sounds very generic. Of course, we have a reluctant return home after a decade because that's the standard length of time that people must be away before they can return, apparently. We have a missing mother. I don't know, it just sounds all very vague and generic and 
I just do not trust Megan Miranda to do a good job with the story but you know that's just me. Like I said I know that she's a very popular suspense thriller author and I do believe strongly that she will be featured in this category for the month of April. And then the last one I want to talk to you about is While We Were Burning by Sarah Kofi. I picked this one for a couple of reasons. First of all it is a debut but also it says it's a combination of Parasite meets Such a Fun Age and I do believe that Such a Fun Age was featured on Book of the Month if I'm not mistaken but this definitely sounds like it could be a book that Book of the Month would like to feature. It says after her best friend's mysterious death Elizabeth Smith's picture perfect life in the Memphis suburbs has spiraled out of control so much so that she hires a personal assistant to keep her on track. Composed and elegant Brianna is exactly who she needs and slides so neatly into Elizabeth's life almost like she belonged there from the start. Soon the assistant Elizabeth hired to distract her from her obsession with her friend's death is the same person working with her to uncover the truth behind it because Brianna has questions too. She wants to know why the police killed her young black son. Why someone in Elizabeth's neighborhood called the cops on him that day. Who took that first step that stole her child away from her and the only way she's ever going to be able to find out is to entwine herself deep into Elizabeth's life where the answers to her questions lie. As the two women hurtle towards an electrifying final showdown and the lines between employer and friend blur, it becomes clear that neither of them is what they first appear. So that sounds like it's going to have some complicated aspects. It's definitely going to deal with some racism, police brutality. This woman lost her son tragically to the police and now she's determined to figure out who ended up calling the police on her son that day and she thinks by infiltrating this woman's home that that's going to happen. So that actually sounds very intriguing to me. I would love to see this one on Book of the Month. We all know that Book of the Month loves their debut authors so I think that this could be a strong contender as well. All right moving on into the romance category. I only have two but one of them is certainly a strong contender and I would be absolutely shocked if this were not featured. It is of course Abby Jimenez's new release just for the summer. Y'all know how I feel about Abby Jimenez. She is currently my favorite romance author of all time and her previous two new releases Part of Your World and Yours Truly were both featured on Book of the Month and so I would love to go ahead and see this one featured as well and I do believe that it will be. This says Justin has a curse and thanks to a Reddit thread it's now all over the internet. Every woman he dates goes on to find their soulmate the second they break up. When a woman slides into his DMs with the same problem they come up with a plan. They'll date each other and break up. Their curses will cancel each other's out and they'll both go on to find the love of their lives. It's a bonkers idea and it just might work. I think we know where this is going. Emma hadn't planned that her next assignment as a traveling nurse would be in Minnesota but she and her best friend agree that dating Justin is too good of an opportunity to pass up especially when they get to rent an adorable cottage on a private island on Lake Minnetonka. It's supposed to be a quick fling just for the summer but when Emma's toxic mother shows up and Justin has to assume guardianship of his three siblings they're suddenly navigating a lot more than they expected including catching real feelings for each other. What if this time bait has actually brought the perfect pair together? Oh my gosh I'm getting goosebumps just reading the synopsis. I know that Abby Jimenez is going to do this justice and of course it sounds like we're going to get those signature harder hitting elements from her and I'm just ready for it. I'm so excited to read this book when it comes out. And this next one actually caught my eye because it is written by a person who is adapting some of the Emily Henry books that are currently coming to the screen. It is called How to End a Love Story by Yu Lin Kuang. I'm not going to read this whole synopsis here because it's very long but it says it's a sexy and emotional enemies to lovers romance guaranteed to pull on your heartstrings and give you a book hangover from brilliant new voice Yu Lin Kuang. So this sounds really cute. We all know that I love a good hate to love romance. It sounds like it's going to follow a best-selling author whose books are being adapted and maybe the screenwriter that's helping her adapt them which is absolutely perfect considering Yu Lin Kuang's own profession. So this could be one that I'm willing to check out especially if she is adapting Emily Henry. I do enjoy Emily Henry. She's not my favorite. I would be interested to see how Yu Lin Kuang crafts her own romance. So I would not be surprised to see this one on book of the month for sure. All right now we are moving on into literary slash contemporary fiction and this one was a hard one to narrow down y'all. I definitely had more than five books that I wanted to talk about in this category but of course I can't. So I would not be surprised to see if some of my runners up are also featured on book of the month but we're going to go ahead and stick with the five starting with The House of Broken Bricks by Fiona Williams. This says Tess is a Londoner whose relationship with Richard transports her from a Jamaican diaspora in the city to the English countryside where predatory birds hover over fields, buses run twice a day, neighbors barter honey for cider, and no one looks like her. As Tess and Richard settle in, the dramatic arrival of their fraternal twins, one who presents as black and the other as white, recasts the family dynamic, stirring up complicated feelings and questions of belonging. Tess yearns for the comforting chaos of life as it once was, instead of Max and Sonny tracking dirt through the kitchen, where cooking Caribbean food becomes her sole comfort, and Richard obsesses over getting his crops planted rather than deal with the conversation he cannot bear to have. So that synopsis really doesn't give us too terribly much, but it definitely sounds like it's going to be a family drama, complex family relationships. It definitely sounds like it's going to deal with topics of racism. That's what makes me think that this could be featured on Book of the Month because they do like to feature books that tackle these harder hitting topics. So that is why I included this one on this list. We also have a book called The Spoiled Heart by Sanjeev Sahoda. And the synopsis for this one again is very long. I'm just going to read this last blurb. It says, in one sense a tragedy in the classic mold, tracing one man's seemingly inexorable fall. The Spoiled Heart is also an explosively contemporary story of how a few words or a single action to one person careless to another charged can trigger a cascade of unimaginable consequences. A vivid and multi-layered exploration of the mysteries of the heart, how community is forged and broken, and the shattering impact of secrets and assumptions 
assumptions alike. It is a blazing achievement from one of Britain's foremost living writers. Okay, well that's high praise. And again, I believe that Book of the Month likes to choose books that explore complicated relationship dynamics. And so that is why I chose this one to be on the list for Book of the Month in April. We also have a book called Real Americans by Rachel Kong. Now I chose this one not just for the synopsis of it, but because Rachel Kong has been featured on Book of the Month in the past with her book Goodbye Vitamins. So I think that adds a little bit of extra strength to the possibility of her being featured either as a monthly selection or as an add-on selection. It says, Real Americans begins on the precipice of Y2K in New York City when 22-year-old Lily Chen, an unpaid intern at a slick media company, meets Matthew. Matthew is everything Lily is not, easygoing and effortlessly attractive, a native East Coaster and most notably heir to a vast pharmaceutical empire. Lily couldn't be more different. Flat broke, raised in Tampa, the only child of scientists who fled Mao's cultural revolution. Despite all this, Lily and Matthew fall in love. In 2021, 15-year-old Nick Chen has never felt like he belonged on the isolated Washington Island where he lives with his single mother, Lily. He can't shake the sense she's hiding something. When Nick sets out to find his biological father, the journey threatens to raise more questions than answers. In immersive moving prose, Rachel Kong weaves a profound tale of class and striving, race and visibility, and family and inheritance, a story of trust, forgiveness, and finally coming home. Okay, interesting. So we're following Lily and Matthew in the past as they're meeting and falling in love, two very opposite people. And then 15 years later, it sounds like Lily and Matthew have a son, but Lily and Matthew are no longer together. And so now that son is 15 years old and is kind of determined to find out who he is and find his father. So again, complicated, complex characters, family dynamics, relationships. Another story that I really feel would be likely to be featured on Book of the Month, especially since Rachel Kong is a previously featured author. And of course, we also have Anne Napolitano's newest release called Within Arm's Reach. Her previous release, Hello Beautiful, was featured on Book of the Month. And unfortunately, that book was a pretty big disappointment for me. So I will not be picking up this one. But I do think that because she's a repeat author, she could be featured on Book of the Month again. This says, no one in my mother's family ever talks about anything that can be categorized as unpleasant or as having to do with emotions. The spellbinding novel by bestselling author Anne Napolitano is a poignant reminder of how connected we are to those we love, even when we cannot find the words to say it. The unforgettable story of three generations of an Irish American family within arm's reach is another rich and deeply satisfying novel from the author who captured the many dimensions of grief in Dear Edward and the unbreakable bonds of sisterhood in Hello Beautiful. So this is going to be a generational family story. I feel like a lot of the books that I'm talking about in this category all feature very similar themes of family dynamics, complex relationships, and things like that. Again, because she's a repeat author, I would not be surprised to see this one featured on Book of the Month at all in April, and that's why I needed to include it here. And this final one that I want to mention in this category is one that I've been seeing going around quite frequently, and it caught my attention. It's called The Husbands by Holly Gramazio. It says, when Lauren returns home to her flat in London late one night, she is greeted at the door by her husband, Michael. There's only one problem. She's not married. She's never seen this man before in her life. But according to her friends, her much improved decor and the photos on her phone, they've been together for six years. As Lauren tries to puzzle out how she could be married to someone she can't remember meeting, Michael goes to the attic to change a light bulb and abruptly disappears. In his place, a new man emerges and a new, slightly altered life reforms around her. Realizing that her attic is creating an infinite supply of husbands, Lauren confronts the question, if swapping lives is as easy as changing a light bulb, how do you know you've taken the right path? When do you stop trying to do better and start actually living? So that definitely sounds like it's going to have some speculative elements to it. So I guess this could have been moved to speculative fiction, but I went ahead and placed it here because it definitely seems firmly contemporary for the most part. And it is certainly an interesting premise. So this is one I'm intrigued by. I don't know if I would actually pick it up, but I'm very fascinated by the concept of it. All right, moving on into historical fiction. The first book I want to talk to you about is All We Were Promised by Ashton Lattimore. It says Philadelphia, 1837. After Charlotte escaped from the crumbling White Oaks plantation down south, she'd expected freedom to feel different from her former life as an enslaved housemate. After all, Philadelphia is supposed to be the birthplace of American liberty. Instead, she's locked away playing servant to her white passing father as they both attempt to hide their identities from slave catchers who would destroy their new lives. Longing to break away, Charlotte B. Fresnel, a budding abolitionist from one of Philadelphia's wealthiest black families. Just as Charlotte starts to envision a future, a familiar face from her past reappears. Evie, her friend from White Oaks, has been brought to the city by the plantation mistress and she's desperate to escape. But as Charlotte and Nell conspire to rescue her, in a city engulfed by race riots and attacks on abolitionists, they soon discover that fighting for Evie's freedom may cost them their own. So this sounds like it's going to be set firmly in 1837, no multiple timelines or anything like that. And it is certainly going to deal heavily with slavery and abolitionism. This one definitely sounds promising for historical fiction for Book of the Month. So keep your eye out for this one. This next one I have is called The Stone Home by Crystal Hanna Kim. Now this is definitely one that I debated putting in the literary fiction category as opposed to historical fiction, but this definitely has a historical time period to it. And as I mentioned, my literary slash contemporary fiction category was completely full. So I went ahead and placed it here. I'm just going to read this blurb really quick. It says, a hauntingly poetic family drama and coming of age story that reveals a dark corner of South Korean history through the eyes of a small community living in a reformatory center. A stunning work of great emotional power from the critically acclaimed author of If You Leave Me. So it sounds like there is going to be a 2011 perspective as well as South Korea in the 1980s. And I don't believe that I really see too terribly many books set in South Korea. It sounds like this is going to cover topics that I'm not 
not necessarily all that familiar with. It says it is inspired by real events told through alternating timelines and two intimate perspectives. It is a deeply affecting story of a mother and daughter's love and a pair of brothers whose bond is put to an unfathomably difficult test. Capturing a shameful period of history with breathtaking restraint and tenderness, Crystal Hana Kim weaves a lyrical exploration of the legacy of violence and the complicated psychology of power while showcasing the extraordinary acts of devotion and friendship that can rise in the darkness. So again, very poignant, very powerful, raw, real. This is certainly a notable historical fiction that I would not be surprised to see featured on Book of the Month. Next, we have a book called The Village Weavers by Miriam J. A. Chansey. I have never heard of this author previously. It says, from award-winning author Miriam J. A. Chansey comes an extraordinary and enduring story of two families forever joined by country and by long-held secrets and two girls with a bond that refuses to be broken. In 1940s Port-au-Prince, Gertie and Cece become fast childhood friends despite being on opposite ends of the social and economic ladder. As young girls, they build their unlikely friendship until a deathbed revelation ripples through their families and tears them apart. After Francois Duvalier's rule turns deadly in the 1950s, Cece moves to Paris while Gertie marries into a wealthy Dominican family. Across decades and continents, through personal success and failure, they are parted and reunited, slowly learning the truth of their singular relationship. Finally, six decades later, with both women in the United States, a sudden phone call brings them back together once more to reckon with and perhaps forgive the past. Told with power and frankness, Village Weavers confronts the silences around class, race, and nationality, charts the moments when lives are irrevocably forced apart, and envisions two girls connected their entire life who try to break inherited cycles of mistrust and find ways back into each other's hearts. So again, another story that is set in locations that we don't typically see covered in historical fiction. This is going to follow a lifelong friendship and probably what happens when they split apart and they go different directions and what happens when they come back together and all of the in-between. So again, very poignant, possibly raw and harrowing at the same time. And if this sounds like something that's up your alley, this I feel like is a pretty good contender for historical fiction on Book of the Month in April. And the very final one that I want to talk to you about in this category is a book called Your Presence is Mandatory by Sasha Vasiliev. This says, Ukraine 2007, Yefim Shulman, husband, grandfather, and war veteran was beloved by his family and his co-workers. But in the days after his death, his widow Nina finds a letter to the KGB in his briefcase. Yemen had a lifelong secret and his confession forces them to reassess the man they thought they knew and the country he had defended. In 1941, Yefim is a young artillerist on the border between the Soviet Union and Germany, eager to defend his country and his large Jewish family against Hitler's forces. But surviving the war requires sacrifices Yefim never imagined. And even when the war ends, his fight isn't over. He must conceal his choices from the KGB and from his family. Spanning seven decades between World War II and the current Russia-Ukraine conflict, your presence is mandatory traces the effect Yefim's cover-up had on the lives of Nina, their two children, and grandchildren. In the process, Sasha Vasiliuk shines a light on one family caught between two totalitarian regimes and the grace they find in the course of their survival. Okay, that sounds actually very, very harrowing. I'm really interested to see what Yefim kept from the KGB and what he did. I would certainly be willing to check this one out, and I would love to see it featured on Book of the Month in April. So next we are going into the sci-fi fantasy slash magical realism category, and there weren't really any releases coming out during the month that I felt super strongly with, but there is one that I did want to mention. It is The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. This is Lee Bardugo's newest release. She has been featured on Book of the Month in the past with Ninth House and Hellbent, so I wouldn't necessarily be surprised to see this featured on Book of the Month, but I'm not necessarily sold on the idea of it being featured, but I did want to mention it here. This definitely sounds like it's going to be a departure from anything that she's ever done because it's actually set in the Spanish Golden Age. There's not really a short blurb here, so I'm going to read the synopsis. It says, in a shabby house on a shabby street in the new capital of Madrid, Lucio Cotado uses scraps of magic to get through her days of endless toil as a scullion. But when her scheming mistress discovers the lump of a servant cowering in the kitchen is actually hiding a talent for little miracles, she demands Luzia use those gifts to improve the family's social position. What begins as simple amusement for the nobility takes a perilous turn when Luzia garners the notice of Antonio Perez, the disgraced secretary to Spain's king. Still reeling from the defeat of his armada, the king is desperate for any advantage in the war against England's heretic queen, and Perez will stop at nothing to regain the king's favor. Determined to seize this one chance to better her fortune, Luzia plunges into a world of seers and alchemists, holy men and hucksters, where the lines between magic, science, and fraud are never certain. But as her notoriety grows, so does the danger that her Jewish blood will doom her to the Inquisition's wrath. She will have to use every bit of her wit and will to survive, even if that means enlisting the help of Ulain Santangel, an embittered immortal familiar whose own secrets could prove deadly for them both. All right, so after reading that, I am a little bit more intrigued. I still don't know if I would pick this up, but again, she has been featured on Book of the Month in the past. I would not be surprised at all to see her featured again in this category. All right, now typically I would end the video here with that category, but I actually have some in the nonfiction slash memoir category that I want to talk to you about today and also a short story collection. So really quickly with the nonfiction, we have the newest release by Eric Larson called The Demon of Unrest. Several of Eric Larson's books have been featured in the past. So this certainly is a strong contender for either a monthly curated selection or as an add-on selection, which is why I needed to go ahead and mention it here. I'm not going to read this entire thing, but it says it brings to life the pivotal five months between the election of Abraham Lincoln and the start of the Civil War, a simmering crisis that finally tore a deeply divided nation in two. In all honesty, I'm incredibly intrigued by the subjects that Eric Larson chooses to cover, but I tried to read The Devil in the White City and it was just a little bit too dry for me. It wasn't working for me, so I DNF'd 
loved it and I don't think I want to pick up anything else by him but I'm very very much intrigued by the subject of the story especially since it covers like Civil War era time frame but if you like Eric Larson please be on the lookout because I would be very shocked if this one was not featured on Book of the Month in April. And this next one is definitely not one that would have been on my radar at all but it has been going around and based on some hints and clues that I've seen I do think that it could be a contender for the nonfiction category. It is called The Wives A Memoir by Simone Garindo and it says when her new husband joins an elite army unit Simone Garindo is uprooted from New York City and dropped into Columbus, Georgia, a town so foreign she might as well have landed on the moon. With her husband frequently deployed, Simone is left to find her place in this new world alone until she meets the wives. Garindo gives us an intimate look into the inner lives of a remarkable group of women and a tender, unflinching portrait of marriage, a love story, an unforgettable coming-of-age tale, and a bracing tour of the intractable divisions that plague our country today. The Wives offers a rare and powerful gift, a hopeful stitch in the fabric of a torn America. So that actually sounds really lovely, really poignant, and really important. I'm just like not a nonfiction memoir type girl, but if you are, please be on the lookout for this one on Book of the Month in April. And so this next one is actually a short story collection. And the reason why I'm discussing it here is because it's actually a short story collection by A. Martoles. Several of his past historical fictions have been featured on Book of the Month. And so I think it would be very likely that Book of the Month would continue to feature A. Martoles, even though this is like a departure from something that he normally releases. This contains six short stories and they are historical fiction. They are featured in Golden Age Hollywood. I do think that there is a strong likelihood that this one could be featured. So I wanted to make sure it was on your radar. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are my Book of the Month predictions for the month of April. And again, I'm only talking about the books that are being released in April. I'm not talking about any March releases that could be featured in April or any May books that could be featured in April. But please feel free to comment down below and let me know if there are any books that you are hoping to see on Book of the Month in April or if there are any releases you think that I missed that are more likely to be featured on Book of the Month than some of the releases that I talked about in this video. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me some type of summer related emoji in honor of Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. Y'all know that I love seeing your comments down below. I really appreciate the engagement and it helps me and my channel so, so much. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with the books I may talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.